Hello everyone, Pally Time here, and welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. Hope you guys are doing well today. We are in the middle of our Kira deep dive, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Kira's Q build. Now, this was a concept that I didn't even know people were doing. I was taking a look at the win rates over the course of the last few patches, and Carnage is a clear winner right now. The Q play style is all about poking from a distance using your sword to bleed enemies. As you get to level 13 and you pick up Chainsaw, suddenly you're getting a bunch of cooldown reduction as well. So it allows Kira to play at a bit more of a mid-range rather than being an all-in melee attacker. Interesting play style. I definitely think I could have played it better if I had practiced it a bit more, but I hope you guys enjoy today's video none. The less. If you do, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Check out our other videos in the deep dive using the playlist in the video description. And I'll see you guys again very soon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves in the Garden Terror map today. The friendly team Kira, Lucio, Muradin, Kelfizad, and Ragnaros. The enemy team Kelthas, Imperius, and Uberak, Sylvanas, and Ariel. This is the build for Kira that I am the least familiar with but it is the build that is performing the best right now as far as win rates. And that's even counting in variations. Uh, we are going for maximum effort at level one. If Carnage damages the same hero three times, it deals an additional bit of damage. And it's also going to slow them as well. So this Anubarak on the way out is slowed. Let's stun him into the wall and then we're gonna slow him again. Look at that. Our Q ability breaks off our sword into five different segments. Each of these segments, as they hit enemies, will apply bleeds. I suppose I could have helped out in that a bit more. So you, it's really easy to see on this skin, actually. The, the individual stars that go out are all the various segments of our blade. If we hit an enemy enough to get three stacks, and it does damage going and coming back, we are going to be slowing down these enemies quite a lot. That has some phenomenal synergy with this handsome lad right here, our Kel'Thuzad. I'm potentially setting him up to have even easier crowd controls, but at the same time, he's sitting, he is setting me up to then be able to do lots of bleed damage to multiple enemies very rapidly, like you just saw there. Ooh, Lucio went to the wrong neighborhood and found out what happens. Uh, we are very close to... There we go. Got the slow onto Sylvanas. I probably want to back up before the Anubarak turns back around. I also want to soak the bottom lane, which the enemy team has still not found. It's still pushing. Uh, one of them might be here as I show up, so we, we do need to be careful about our current health pool. Uh, I could sip or I could just go back to the base really quick. I might just do that. Unfortunately, in this setup, we are not going to be getting the PvE heal, which I am a very big fan of on Kira. But we still do get to pick up your pain, my gain. Basic attacking enemy hero allows us to gain armor and keep ourselves in fights for longer. Arya and Sylvanas moving down the bottom lane. Let's oop, regret every decision we've ever made. Did I see that right? Where my lasso put one bleed on a Nubarak while he was underground? He's probably unstoppable, so I can't attach to him. That's interesting. I've never seen that happen. I've never seen that interaction before. I want to move up. I know the enemy team is close, but I want that region globe before we leave. Uh, I'm going to try and lasso off that if I can. Unfortunately, I just keep getting stunned out of everything. Small boot by Imperius moves him out of lasso range as well, but we do slow him on the way out. I'm pretty much forced to take my sippy cup here because I never went back to the base, which means I do want to fight with this region sooner rather than later. Enemy team not moving in on this too quickly. Lasso around. Bail off of that one. I kind of disagree with that stun. Almost had my heal ready to go, but unfortunately wasn't able to press the W button in time. Imperius had me on the tip of that spear for what felt like an eternity. So how does the mindset of Q build here a dipper from the other setups? 
Well, with bleed build, your goal is to basically just spread wide damage as fast as possible because you want bleeds on as many targets as possible. When you're playing auto attack Kira, you kind of want to just move in and start hitting your auto attacks on enemies to get those stacks built up as fast as possible. For this setup, obviously our Q is the most important. Th Were you in there, base? Obviously the Q is the most important thing. To the point where you want to run in and start with your Q just to get the cooldown going and then start to figure out the rest of your build or the rest of your engagement. Whereas Q is normally the follow-up for a lot of your big engagements on Kira. At level seven, we pick up the Thirst. Carnage heals for 50% of the damage dealt to enemy heroes. Anytime Carnage damages an enemy hero, Kira's next basic attack within four seconds deals additional damage. And that stacks up quite a lot too. Once we start hitting level 13 and we get Chainsaw, that's when this build really starts to go off the rails and dealing a bunch of damage because we're gonna be getting basically ability cooldown resets all the while, we're still continuing to spread bleeds out everywhere. And that was a pretty decent amount of damage in that last encounter, if I do say so myself. This does allow me to play a bit further back. I don't have to be as aggressive. We can set up plays like just poking at our enemies. Oh, I'm too far forward here. There's another cube. But it also means that my positioning in team fights matters a lot more because I'm not necessarily whipping around these enemies constantly. Go ahead and heal there. Okay, I'm gonna start killing these off. I don't know why this one's walking off to the side. We're, we're at least soaking these for our team and our Lucio can go in and channel. I almost died to little plant creatures. Come on, man. So far, hero damage is not looking too bad at all. I apologize if my play is clunky for this setup. This, Like I said, this is the one I am used to the least. I'm actually considering taking the Execute, the final strike, instead of the AoE uh, to stun around me, just because I know I'm going to be further back a bit more. But that does also help stack up bleeds. Maybe we'll still do it. The Silence could definitely be good as well, if we can catch Ariel in it at level 20. That's a long way away, though. The enemy team is starting to group up in the middle lane a little bit. We're just going to... Whoa! Didn't expect to see the bug. I was just going to slide in and clear the lane. How's Kel'Thuzad's stacks looking? His quest is done, so his damage is online. I'm going to stun off of him. That settles it. We're stunning off of that. We need to clear this before we go to the objective. We have 10 seconds to do that. That's plenty of time. Anubarek's been playing kind of weird. Uh, at least I think it's weird. He's been waiting to engage with his dive, which is kind of his only mobility. But he's been trying to, like, ambush with it. Oh. I could have lassoed there, and I think that would have been good. I didn't do it, though. I'm gonna lasso here. I So if I didn't grapple and I just queued there, it's possible I would have had enough health off of the Q to help sustain that a little bit more while waiting for the W. The big engage on Lucio there caught me off guard. I was trying to move to the other side so I could then Q through that and hit that Entomb with a bunch of segments. To be honest, I don't know if that ever happened because of all the CC coming out. It looks like our team somehow on the winning side of that as Kel'Thuzad manages to channel that objective for the home team. That means we've had two of the three tributes that have been put in play in the next one is going to be a curse for us if we can make it happen. I really want level 13 as this objective is happening. So if this looks like it's about to be done, which it does, I'm immediately gonna leave. I'll let Lucio finish that off. And I am gonna go grab all this XP up here, try to maybe push one more lane really fast. Uh, going in, not going in. Well, they're still committing, holy shit. Spread out. Don't spread bomb. Don't spread bomb. Unfortunately, I missed the lasso into the corner there. That could have been a bit better. It's such a fucking narrow skill shot. And these are narrow fighters that we have on the enemy team, too. Uh, have to lasso here to stay alive. 
That was a great way of stopping it. That was a really good Ariel ult that left me high and dry. Oh no. Oh no, and a great cocoon by the Anubarak pushing up on our Lucio is gonna stop him from doing anything. Look at the surround, the silencing arrow making everything quiet except for his tinnitus as Lucio goes down. Okay, this is proving to be a very difficult game for me to thrive in. These guys have a lot of control, which means I'm gonna have to really adjust how aggressive I've been playing. If all of this control is being used on me, I don't like that. We need to wait for it to be used on someone else. Let them go into Muradin a bit harder. But here we go, Chainsaw is online. This is where the fun begins. Now, as long as we have enemies bleeding, Right oh god, oh god, oh god. Now as long as we have enemies bleeding, we can then use our Q to get more cooldowns, heal for more, without having to ever press our W. But I just keep fucking baiting myself into these fights I have no business being in. I keep saying we need to make the adjustment, now we have to actually make it. I keep seeing blood in the water. I just want to get kills. This next tribute matters a lot. This is a curse for whichever team gets it. I'm respawning right now, so numbers are even. Ragnaros already in the area. How are we going to approach this as a team? Looks like the enemy being very cautious. Muradin not with us. Grappling, healing. Q one more time. Look at our Q cooldown, by the way. We're basically a long range caster now. Slowing health is on. We're gonna spin on that. Nice. Nice, good. That was calm and composed. Do you see that? I left the conflict and I was waiting to reposition. What a concept! Showing restraint on a melee assassin can be very difficult, but the point of this build is that it's able to poke and I need to utilize that poke potential more. That was an example of what it could look right when it goes, when it goes well. That being said, the enemy team has so much fucking crowd control, it's very difficult to make it go well, even if I was playing well. Uh, we're taking Booming Kick. Booming Kick is pretty much mandatory in every single Kira setup. It does so much damage. In fact, me being there is too risky. All it takes is one crowd control and Imperius can keep me dead forever. Keep me still forever. These guys though, hello. How are you? So I want to get these slow first and foremost. They are definitely on the way. Why did my lasso not connect there? Was I stunned? Done? Done? <laughs> yes! Yes, dude! You thought that cocoon would save you? All right, this three kills. Let's just push this up. I could booming kick up there if it's still disabled, but unfortunately that's no longer the case. All right, let's move it back. Let's move it back. Let's move it back. How long on this camp? 14 seconds. We might be able to steal this. Of course, I missed the bleed on everything. I said our skill shots are narrow. Every single one of our skill shots is the same width. There's no easy skill shots on Kira. I see three up top chasing a Muradin. I can't imagine that's the best use of their time. If we see a move, though, I want this. I want to steal this. 100%. And that is what a perfect Kira setup looks like, by the way. The problem with that is that you go in and forego all chance of leaving. I had no escape plan if that grappling hook combo did not go well. However, when it does go well, it is a thing of fucking beauty. Okay. This will die from just the dudes pushing. We don't even need to pressure it anymore. Uh, is that Kelthos by himself? 
Oh my god. Go, 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 go. Leave, leave, leave. <laughs> Staggered their numbers really hard when they needed tribute. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. So one reason that this, this combo plays well like that is as we move back in with the lasso, the target is stunned. So that guarantees we get all of our talent uh, buffs from Carnage. Basically, we put it on them right away. It's easy to land all of the segments. I do think it's more optimal to try to bleed them first and then go in and do the combo because you still have crowd con you still have a cooldown reduction rolling on the carnage. I do think that's a better way of playing it. Uh, however, our combo is just fine. Silent Killer becoming active. Let's just go ahead and channel that right here on this guy. He cannot cast any spells. We cannot cast any spells. <laughs> Thanks, Sylvanas. Wow, thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and just break the cocoon. We're playing back by our Ragnaros. Great combo. I'm dead. Oh. He just stunned me in tower range and then he walked away. He just stunned me in tower range. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> that, feels, that feels so disrespectful. <laughs> the friendly team's not done though. They finish off the tower. Imperius gets completely melted. This time for real. And now, oh, it looks like the bottom tier two structure falling. We have giants pushing the top tier two structure as well. Stolen from their side of the map. This push is looking really, really good. We do see our Lucio getting stopped though. Is it enough? What the fuck? <laughs> Wait, no, no, the Beatles! The Beatles got him! The fucking Beatles got him! <laughs> oh, this Anubarak is getting some really slick kills this game. <laughs> uh, the next objective is popping soon. I'm in the area, so I'm going to start this mercenary camp uh, before it goes. Hopefully, hopefully we have enough time. This is still an important tribute for the enemy team, so it is important that we do take it. Because this will be a curse for them. Even though things are going well, our Lucio just died. So we're not out of the woods yet. I'm just going to ult this to kill it faster. Okay. And channel quickly, I hope, before anyone's able to get here. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay, that gives us yet another curse, which is going to start pushing across the map. We have our Lucio back up and ready to go now. And you, that might feel weird to use your ult, but it's only a 60 second cooldown. Like, that's going to be ready to go again. The enemy team is defending top lane right now, putting everything they got on that giant monstrosity. Uh, Lucio has skated his way back into our hearts up at the top of the screen as well. So this is a full push going towards the end. So we just need to wait. We need to wait for other spells to be used. Start poking with our Q now. We do lose our Kel'thas. I don't think it matters. Channel, channel. Oh, awkward. I was trying to stop him from being able to engage and he jumped right into my silence there. I was just trying to create space to make sure that these guys push in. So, I said it at the beginning, this was the build on Kira I am the least comfortable with, and I think it showed throughout the entire match. However, don't let that stop you from trying this out. This is the top win rate build for Kira over the last three small patches. I went back and I looked at all of them, and that really surprised me, because it's a very different play style from what I'm used to. Cheers! Kedas, Kedutsat, Zamusing. Same thing. They both have KT in their name. They're the same person. I can't tell them apart, officer. We went from maximum effort at level one into your pain, my gain. The variation here at level four would be taking the evasion on our bleed instead of the armor that's stacking up. 
And I do kind of see a case for both of them, that's for sure. The Thirst at level 7 into Unrelenting Strikes, Chainsaw at level 13. This is where the build really starts to pop off. This is when, before you even do any of your normal combo stuff on Kira, I think you first land your Q. I think you just send it. And then get the cooldown reduction going, and then you start playing like normal. Booming Kick at level 16 is mandatory, and Silent Killer at 20 is where the fun really begins. I could have played that one better, but that's going to do it for today's video. Hope you all enjoyed. In the next episode of the Kira Deep Dive, we're going to be showing my weird hybrid build that brings all of the fun of Kira together in one place. Hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you then.